ladies and gentlemen, once again coming to you, not quite live, from One Take Studios. Why One Take Studios? Because you only get one take at life, so do something productive with it. There we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking probability rules for compound events today, and quite frankly, there's a whole bunch of little stuff here, so please make sure that you are paying attention to the details. We are going to start with the keyword of and for today. All right, so we have two keywords today. We're going to go through and and or. This is and. What kind of compound events are linked by the word and? Uh, first type is independent. All right, so if I have two events that are independent, the outcome of one event does not affect the other, but one event and the other event are both happening, as opposed to also and. We have dependent, where the outcome of one event does affect the outcome of the other. Okay, so what's all the rest of this stuff? All right, so here's the deal. We can see here the probability of A and B. Capital letters represent events, so this is saying the probability of this event and this event happening. Well, how do I calculate this probability when I've got compound events, more than one, one and the other? The idea is I'm going to find the probability for one event, I'm going to find the probability for the other event, and I'm going to multiply those two probabilities together. And that gets me the probability of one and the other happening. Um, that's actually kind of tied to the fundamental counting principle, for those of you that are, are aware of that, um, as far as why the multiplication works. This one is very similar but weird. So the probability of A and B, these are both and things, all right? We still have the probability of A times the probability of B. However, this down slash essentially means given. It's not an operation. We're saying the probability of B given that A has happened. So because one outcome does affect the other, does affect the other, this one is does not, this one is does, notice the difference there. We are saying that because A has happened, that is changing the outcome of event B somehow or vice versa. I could also be saying that the probability of B times the probability of A, given that B has occurred. Something that happened with B changed the probability for A. Now this sounds a little bit weird up front, so I would like to go through a couple of examples of this to kind of show you what I'm talking about. So, let's go one example at a time here, shall we? All right, so we are starting with and examples, and examples. So based on what we just talked about here, uh, this is the probability of rolling two fives on two fair dice. All right, so fair dice, so these are not loaded, there's no, nothing to throw, off, throw them off for the weights. So I've got two dice and I'm rolling them. What's the probability of rolling a five on the one and a five on the other? So two fives, one and another. Well, let's think about this. So I'm talking about the probability for two fives being probability of one five times the probability of a second five. Okay, what's the probability of rolling a five? Think favorable over total, that's one favorable outcome out of six on the die, so that's one out of six is the probability for rolling a five. Well, okay, so I want to <laughs> I would like to roll another five. That's again one favorable outcome out of six. So what's the probability of both of these things happening? Both of these things happening is going to be, oh wait, I can multiply fractions, can you? One times one is one. Six times six is 36. So one thirty-sixth is the chance or the probability of rolling two fives on two fair dice. So think of a game board. I've just rolled two dice. What's the probability of coming up with a pair of fives? One out of 36. And that's because if you write out all of the possible outcomes for rolling dice, there's actually 36 different things that could happen, and this is simply one of them. Okay, so one and the other. We are saying here that this is independent, so just plain old rolling stuff, nothing's happening. We're not talking about the one die somehow affecting the other die. Okay, that's independent. As opposed to, this is actually going to be a double example, so this is part A. So we're, the setup for this is the probability of drawing a king and a four. I don't like these being so close together. I'm going to throw a squiggle in here just because. 
All right, the probability of drawing a king and a four. So if you do not know about decks of cards, you probably want to get uh, up to date on decks of cards real fast. There's 52 cards in a deck, there are four suits, and there are four kings and four fours. So with replacement means that I'm going to draw a card, and I'm going to put it back, and then I'm going to draw another card. Well, okay, so if I draw the king, I'm going to assume favorable that I drew the king. So this is the probability of one and the other probability of king and four. The probability for drawing the king, well there are four kings out of 52 cards, and, and, multiplying, there are, well, well let's see, if I took this card out and I put it back, how many cards are in the deck now? Still 52, right? So there are, the second time around, four fours out of 52 cards, because that first card that I drew, I put it back, so there's still 52 cards. That's it. Which, if you multiply and reduce, that's 1 13th times 1 13th, which is going to be 1 out of 169 for the probability of drawing a king and a four out of a deck. All right, that's with replacement, as opposed to without replacement. Same problem, okay? We are still right here. That's a, these are my giant dots here. All right, so that's one example. Here's part two of this example. I'm gonna draw a king and a four, hopefully, fingers crossed, finding my probability, but without replacement. So it still looks like this, the probability of drawing a king and a four, but when I draw the king out of here, there are four kings, four favorable, out of 52 cards total. There's the probability for the king. But if I am not replacing that king that I drew, my second probability has been altered. It's not going to be four out of 52 like before, because I no longer have 52 cards in the deck. There are still four fours available. However, there are only 51 cards, because I did not replace the king that I drew Leave me with a, a card shortage here. Ooh, what is that? I don't know what that is offhand. All right, so jumping up the crack, uh, yeah. I'm grabbing my calculator. Uh, we've got four out of 52 times four out of 51. Oh yeah, that's just delightful, isn't it? Okay. Mm, yeah, we're talking four out of 663. Four out of 663. Could you turn these into decimals? Absolutely, yes you could. Um, or percentages if you wanted to, or reduced fractions. Those are all considered to be acceptable. So reduced fraction, decimal, or percentage. There we go. All right, so, and, one, two, and, sorry, one, five, and another five. That's going to be independent. With replacement, king and four, that's still independent, but without replacement means that when I go to calculate that second probability, something has changed. That's the difference there. All right, so last one here. Uh, so we're talking about, I've got two pens that I'm gonna be pulling out of a box, and this box contains 100 pens. If both pens that I pull out of this box are gonna be defective, I'm just gonna reject the entire box. So this is like a quality control type of problem. This box actually contains 10 bad pens. So if I have a box of 100, I'm gonna pull two of them out, what's the probability that both of those pens are bad? What's the probability that I'm actually gonna get rid of and toss this entire box? Well, okay, one at a time. What's the probability that one is bad? Well, there are 10 bad pens in a box of 100. That's favorable over total. Favorable in this case is actually bad. If I'm not putting that pen back, and I'm pulling another pen out, because I'm not pulling that, putting that pen back, I now have what? There were 10 bad pens, I pulled one out, there are now nine bad pens, and how many pens are in the box? 99. Probability of pulling the first pen, this is definitely dependent, probability of pulling the second pen. That's it. That's it right there. So it looks kind of scary, but it's not as bad as you might think. And because my brain is a little bit toast at the moment, I'm cheating. There we go. That makes sense. 
this is going to be 1 out of 110. So there's a 1 in 110 chance that I am going to reject this entire box of pens, which means I'm probably going to end up keeping it. There's not a real good chance that I pull out two bad ones in that box. All right, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations. We are about halfway through. Yes, I said halfway through. Deal with it. Okay, now, next up, we also have, dun dun dun, or. So I'll put these guys in the side burner here. We have or. So keyword and, and then or. And focus, focus, focus. There you go. Okay. All right, so what do we have going on here? Here we have mutually exclusive events. So this is independent and dependent. Under or we have mutually exclusive. This indicates that the two events are disjoint. There's no overlapping between them. And I'll come back to the equation here in a second again. We also have not mutually exclusive. So it's either mutually exclusive or it's not. These then actually overlap. So it's possible for both events to occur at once. Notice I said both events to occur at once. This is and. This is two events, one and the other. These are one event. One event or the other event. Two events, one event. That's actually kind of important. All right. Um, not mutually exclusive. Some books have started using the word inclusive, which I highly recommend because this ends up being like a double negative that messes with your brain sort of thing. Um, and again, our formulas are similar, but slightly different. The probability of A or B. If the two events are completely separated from each other, I just need to add the two probabilities together. And I'm going to show you an example here in a second. Your brain does that automatically for some of the most simple problems that we have. Here, we're saying, all right, the probability of A or B, I'm still adding the probability of A with the probability of B. The difference is, because these events actually overlap, I don't want to account the same event here and here, the same probability here and here, I want to remove any overlap so that things only counted once in the process instead of accidentally counting things twice. So let me give you an example that will hopefully bring this into better focus for you. All right, so we have or examples. Or examples. The probability of rolling a five or a six. So remember, our previous example here was rolling a five. Oops, there it goes. A five and a five. We had we had two of those things going on, right there. So one and the other. There were two of them. This is rolling a five or a six. Well, according to this, we can simply find each probability separately and add them together. So that's going to be the probability of a five plus the probability of a six. Well, again, favorable over total, there's one five out of six options, and there is one six out of six options. And if I add those, because I know how to add fractions, do you? Congratulations, they actually have common denominators, which is nice. This is going to be two out of six, which reduces then to one third. So the probability of rolling a five or a six is one third. Some of you probably knew that before I started talking, because your brain said, all right, well, if I'm doing a five or a six, that means that there are two favorable options out of six. And so by default, your brain actually kind of understands this. And again, this is a very simple example, but it does work. Or is saying either one of these things is going to be favorable. I'm just going to combine the probabilities there because anything that happens in that category, five or six, is going to be favorable. So one third is what we've got. All right, back to decks of cards, drawing a king. There are four kings in the deck, or drawing a red card out of a deck of cards. Half of the deck is red. All right, that's 26 out of 52. Here's the thing. King and red could actually happen at the same time. Five and six cannot. If I'm rolling a die, all right, we're talking single event right here. Is there any way that I can roll a five, six? No. But is it possible that if by drawing one card here that I could get both a king and a red card? Yes. And so this one is going to be an example of not mutually exclusive. So again, talking probability of king and the probability of a red. But we are saying that there's overlap between the two, so we're going to have to remove the extra layer, so to speak that has both kings and reds together. So what will that look like? Probability of king. 
there are four kings out of 52 cards. Red, well, that's half the cards, so that's 26 out of 52 cards. Could I have put the fraction one half? Yes, I could. But what am I doing for myself right now? I'm actually creating a situation where I've got common denominators, because that's going to make me happy here in a moment. Minus the probability of a king and a red. Because right now, right now, the kings were covered here, and the reds were covered here. But there is a red heart and a red diamond. So right now, there are two cards that get counted here and here. So the probability of getting a red and a king, since there's a red heart and a red diamond, we are saying that there are two cards out of 52 that just got counted twice. And I don't want to count them here and here, because that would be unfair, so I'm going to remove the extra set of red kings, so that it only gets counted once instead of twice in the process. So if I do 4 plus 26 is 30, minus 2 is 28, we are talking 28 out of 52 is our probability. And can I make that better? Yes, I can. Can I make that a lot better? Uh, yes. That's going to be divided by 4, so 7 out of 13 is the probability of drawing a red, a red or a king. All right, so hopefully that makes some sense. Again, we're talking the difference between mutually exclusive and not mutually exclusive. One event, but here there's no overlap. There's no way to get two events done at the same time. But here it is possible to get both a king and a red. So we have to be careful that everything is, gets counted one time and one time only. All right, uh, again, let's do one more thing that's got some context to it here. Um, if I tell you the probability that it rains this afternoon is going to be 80%, and the probability of hail this afternoon is 70%, or 0.7. Um, I live in Michigan. This is entirely possible. Well, is it possible for it to both rain and hail according to this problem? Yes. It is a 60% chance that it will do both rain and hail. So what is the probability, therefore, of rain or hail? Since both things can happen, we are talking not mutually exclusive. So I can go ahead and I can add these two together, but think about it. If I just add these two together, 0.8 and 0.7, that's 1.5. Is there a 150% probability of weather events? No, because no, no probabilities go any higher than 100%. So simply adding in this case makes no sense. You have to remove the extra in order to get a halfway decent scenario. So we've got the 0.8 for the rain, plus the 0.7 for the hail, so rain, hail, minus the probability of both things happening. So that's actually going to give me 0.9. So there is a 90% chance that there is some form of rain and or hail coming down this afternoon. There's your outcome. All right. Um, ladies and gents, that is most everything. I have one last major note for you. Okay? Notice the word note with double exclamation point. All right, we got a few things happening over here that we've talked about. And if you're not really understanding what's happening, you can get some of them confused. So, independent versus mutually exclusive. They sound similar. This was an and, this was an or. Because independent means that the events are, are happening separately, so there's no overlap, there's nothing to, to call, have one affect the other. Mutually exclusive also said that one event is not affecting the other. But the difference is two events, one event. I have created my own system of interesting things <laughs> to show you. Okay, So here is my comparison. We're just going to block all the rest of this out and focus right on this. Okay, This is my comparison. This is, I, I made this up myself, so if you don't like it, I don't really care. I'm going to tell you right now that the probability of event A happening is possible. However, I don't know what the probability is, so I'm just going to say smiley face. It is possible, and that is the probability that event A will happen. If I am working under independent circumstances, independent circumstances, the probability of A given B, I've got two events happening, one does not affect the other, that means the probability of A, which is still my lead here, is going to be identical. Smiley face again. Because they are independent, because there's two events, the probability of A and the probability of A given B are going to result in the same thing. As opposed to, here for dependent, the probability of A is still going to be smiley face. However, there's two events, 
and they are dependent, which means the probability of A given B means that something has happened. Can event A still happen? Well, yes, because there are two events happening. However, if B has happened, something has changed. So it is still possible to have a probability here, but it's something different. We're going to call it star. So something happened here with B that's changing the outcome of A. But it can still happen. Both of these events can happen. As opposed to mutually exclusive, the probability of A happening is still smiley face because there we go, happiness and joy. What is the probability of A given B under mutually exclusive circumstances? Because again, we said that this looks an awful lot like this, but the lead difference is the two events versus one event. This is saying the probability of A given B, since they're both happening, something changed, but this event can still happen. This one says the probability of A given B, if event B has happened, and only one event is going to happen, what's the probability of A? If you can have only one event, and event B has happened, what's going to happen to the probability of A? It is zero. That is not a symbol, that is a zero. It is not possible. Because B happened, A cannot take place. Therefore, the probability is zero. That's not going to happen. All right, so it took me a good five years to really figure this out in my brain. And if you like it, great. And if you don't, well, then there we go. Go sit on the couch, have a snack. And I'll talk to you later. Bye.